Now we're on to my favorite part of this unit, which is balancing chemical reactions. You are going to get so good at balancing chemical reactions. And unfortunately, I'm going to pummel you with about 120 of these. Yes, I know. You're freaking out. You're like, 120? Holy mackerel. But don't worry. You'll get to the point where you're like, oh, this is kind of cool because it, it's like a puzzle. And these first ones are fairly simple. And as they get more complicated, you'll notice that even though they're more complicated and they have a more, lot more stuff, they're not any harder. You just got to think about it and it becomes a challenge. So let's start with something easy. The first thing you do when you have to balance a chemical reaction is write out reaction and draw a line underneath your arrow. This just separates your reactants from your products when you start to list out your atoms. So first thing you do is start by listing the types of atoms and how many of each there are on both sides. So on the left, I have nitrogen and hydrogen. On the right, I have nitrogen and hydrogen. Hopefully, I have the same type on both sides. Otherwise, I messed up somewhere. If I look on the left, I've got two nitrogens, so that's two. I've got two hydrogens, so that's two. On the right, I only have one nitrogen, and I have three hydrogens. Okay. So the first thing to do is get everything in a nice, neat order so you can see how much of each you've got. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to change the coefficients in front of each of the substances to balance the atoms. Now, what am I talking about? The number in front is what is called the coefficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the number that's in front of each of those substances to see if I can get the atoms to balance on the left and the right. Now, I want to make something very, very clear. People mess this part up all the time. They look at the bottom and they say, oh, two, three. The common factor is six. Let's do all the work down here. And they start multiplying stuff down here. And they forget about things that are going on up, up top. I'm going to show you an example later of where that is bad. Your work goes on here. What goes down below is just, it's like long division. It's all that other stuff that goes down below. So, you know, when you do this, this just keeps everything in a nice, neat, orderly fashion. All the work must be done in the chemical reaction. Now, how do I do this? There's a lot of different methods. My suggestion is it doesn't really matter what you start with, but leave hydrogens and oxygens to the end. And the reason for it is very often hydrogens and oxygens are in multiple compounds. And when they're in multiple compounds, it tends to get hard to balance them. So sometimes balancing other things helps take care of the hydrogen and oxygen problem. And I'll show you an example of that later. So let's start with the nitrogen. So I look at the, there's, a, there's two nitrogens on the left, there's one nitrogen on the right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, sorry, Place a 2 here to increase the number of nitrogens. Okay? When I put a 2 there, I multiply the 2 to each of the subscripts to see how many atoms I have, but I do not change the subscript. So now, instead of having 1, I have 2, because 2 times 1 is 2. How many hydrogens do I have? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. So now I can see my nitrogens are equal but my hydrogens are not, okay? So now I gotta get my hydrogens to be equal. So I'm gonna place a three in front of the hydrogen. And I go three times two is six. So now I can see that I have two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, six hydrogens. Everything is balanced and that is a balanced chemical reaction. And this should now answer for many of you why on previous slides, when you looked at the reaction, you say, well, Mr. Siegel, you only got one carbon on the right, but you got three on the right, on the left. What's going on? This is why we are now why those things weren't balanced before because now we're going to balance them and get everything to be equal. So again, when I balance chemical reactions, I balance both my moles and my oh I haven't talked about moles. I talk I balance the number of atoms that are on the left and the right. Okay, so I have the same number of atoms of hydrogen on the left as I do on the right. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Okay, the process doesn't change. 
first thing I do is draw a line. List out the types of atoms that you have. I have a sodium, hydrogen, and oxygen. I have the same on the right. I have one sodium, two hydrogens, one oxygen on the left. One sodium, one oxygen. I have one plus two is three hydrogens on the right. Now, this is that situation that I warned you about earlier. Number one, I want to leave hydrogens and oxygens to the end. Okay, so I want to start with sodium. Number two, Notice the hydrogen is in two, different in two different places. If I look down below, it looks real easy. I've got three on the right. I have two on the left. Common denominator is six. I multiply the left by three, the right by two. Okay, that gives me six. Then I go up above and I say, okay, where do I put the two? Do I put the two here? Do I put the two here? Uh-oh. This is why you do all your work in the chemical reaction and not down below. The down below is just to carry forth to make sure you've done it correctly. It's a double check. So I want to start with the sodiums. Well, I got one sodium on the left, one sodium on the right. Well, they're already balanced. I can see very quickly that so are the oxygens. So I am going to start with the hydrogens, unfortunately. Now, chemical reactions sometimes are about trial and error. So I'm going to try something and I'm going to see if it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, well, if I put a number out here in front of the hydrogen, that doesn't mess up my sodium and oxygen, which are already balanced. So let's try putting a 2. I always make small jumps. When I put a 2 here, I've got 2 times 2 is 4 plus one more. Don't forget the one that's in the sodium hydroxide is 5. Now I go up here and I want to get my hydrogens to balance. Well, what number times 2 is 5? No, 2.5. Well, that doesn't do me any good because I hate to tell you, for balanced chemical reactions, smallest whole numbers. <clears throat> well, 2.5 is not a whole number. It's a fraction. So this situation is not going to work for me. So let's try something different. Let's try putting a 2 here. Well, when I put a 2 here, I now have two sodiums, two oxygens, and 2 times 1 is 2 plus two is four hydrogens. Ooh, this, this has potential here because I can get a two to be equal to a four. But again, I go back to my non-oxygen and hydrogen elements. So I see that sodium is two and sodium is one. So I'm gonna put a two here. Now I go back to my hydrogen and oxygen. Well, they're in, t in the same compound, so let's try and tackle them together. I've got two. What times two is four? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so let's put a 2 there. When I put a 2, I've got 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. And now when I look, I can see that everything balances. Now, as I go through these examples, I've got several examples here. So obviously, you can pause at any time, try and do these reactions on your own, and then come back to the video and see what I've done. So let's go through this again. Draw your line. A L F E O A L F E O 1 A L 1 F E 1 oxygen 2 A L's 1 F E 3 oxygens. Okay? Well, like I say, leave oxygen to the end. So, let's start with aluminum. Well, aluminum's easy. I've got two on the right, one on the left. I'm going to put a 2. Ions are already balanced, so let's go to the oxygens. I've got three oxygens on the left. I have one oxygen on the right. Three times one is three. Gives me three oxygens, but it also gives me three irons. So now I go to the right, say, well, this is easy. And shabam, I'm all done. Whoa. There's a lot going on in this compound. So let's break this down. Now, I'm going to show you a little shortcut. And I don't like to show shortcuts right off the bat, but this type of situation happens a lot. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Notice that nitrate is nitrate on the left and on the right. And notice that hydroxide 
is hydroxide on the left and on the right. Well, if they don't undergo a change and they don't separate, we can keep them together. So instead of breaking this down into silvers, oxygens, and hydrogens, I'm actually going to leave this as nitrate and hydroxides. And this is a little trick, but and it only works if your polyatomic ions, like nitrate and hydroxide, do not break up. If they break up, this doesn't work. And you have to break it down into their individual parts. So I'd have to list it as A, G, N, O, C, A, H. Obviously, the O is in multiple spots. And this is, again, remember what I said, be careful of oxygen and hydrogen. Look at this oxygen. It's in four of, oh, in every single compound. It's in four compounds. So when you balance it, making a small addition like a two could have a drastic difference. Look here. If I were to put a two here in front of this calcium nitrate, well, this is three times two, which is six times two is 12. So making one tiny change can really affect your numbers. So this is why doing this as a group, grouping the ions, makes it a lot easier. So now I write down how much I've got of each one. I've got one silver, one nitrate, one calcium, two hydroxides. On the left, on the right, I've got one Ag, two nitrates, one calcium, one hydroxide. Okay, well I can see that the only thing that's really wrong here are my hydroxide and, and nitrate numbers. So let's play with those. Which one do you want to start with? Nitrate? Okay, we'll start with nitrate. It doesn't really matter. I can start with nitrate or I can start with hydroxide. It's going to give me the same answer. So I'm going to start with nitrate. I have two nitrates on the right, one on the left. So I'm going to put a two out in front. That's going to give me two silvers and two nitrates. Now again, I stick to doing metals first, metals and non-metals first. So I've got silver. Silver, I've got two on the left, one on the right. So I go to the right and I find my silver and I put a two. And now I've got two silvers, two hydroxide, and whoa, lo and behold, balanced. <clears throat> so something that looked really complicated is now very simple. Just out of curiosity, what type of chemical reaction is this? Good job, decomposition, okay? Decompositions tend to be very complicated looking, but very easy to balance. Now, hopefully you're able to do these on your own. So I'm not going to walk you through them as much. I am going to just list them off. I'm going to kind of go through it a little bit faster. Because again, you can go and watch these examples till you turn blue in the face. So again, Oxygen, hydrogen to the end. Two lithiums on the left, one lithium on the right. Put a two. That makes my lithium two, my oxygen two, my hydrogen. That wasn't a two. That was supposed to be a one to start. So what happens when your brain gets ahead of you a little bit? It's not a one, it's a two. I can see my oxygen numbers are now balanced. And you're like, wait, 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 what did you just do there, Siegel? I didn't see. And this is what happens when you start doing things too fast, when you get a little cocky with your abilities. So I wasn't paying attention, and see, look what I did. Okay? And this is a good example. Let me erase that so it's a little bit clearer. Good example of a way that people mess up all the time. Notice, auction, two spots. So I've got one plus one is two. So, But I only saw it as one, and that will really mess up your balancing later. In fact... If you spend more than five minutes balancing any given reaction that I give you, you messed up. Start from scratch. Just erase everything you did and start all over again because no reaction should take you longer than five minutes to balance.